Hi, my name is Nathaniel Williams. I'm one of the new instructors at the Yellow Barn Studio. Um, and this spring and summer, I'm going to be teaching a class on realist drawing and painting. To give you an idea of how I work, I want to do a little demo video for you to show you how I get started on a complex scene like this one. So this is the reference that I'll be using for this painting. Um, this is a vacant restaurant building, which I saw recently, and I really loved it. I thought it was very evocative, and I knew that I wanted to paint it. So I took a couple of photos, and I did a sketch on location, which gives me a lot of information to work with as I'm developing this painting. Um, I believe that the painting process very much begins when you pick your subject matter, so this is definitely I would consider the first stage of the painting, and what I will show you in the demo is the next stage, which is actually beginning the painting, and I'm going to complete an underpainting and show you how I get this started. So, um, to begin a more complex scene like this, um, the first step is to block in some of the major elements, um, and I'm going to start out by sketching in roughly where I want to place the building, um, which is going to be the focal point of this composition. Uh, it's difficult to see here, but the first thing that I've done is to tone the panel and draw with a pencil two lines across it, one exactly down the middle of the panel, vertically, and one that I'm going to use as a suggestion for the horizon line, which I want to be fairly low in this painting. Using those as a guide, um, I'm sketching in with lightly thin paint, um, some of the lines that I want to set up for this building. You'll see on the left side there are two lines that would correspond to the leftmost edge of the roof. I'm trying to figure out exactly how everything relates to each other. There are going to be some double lines like that as I'm trying to resolve that, which I'll get rid of later. Everything at this stage is stuff that I can get rid of if I want. Um, and as I go along and things sort of firm up, uh, I want to make it so that I don't have to make any drastic changes to like the placement of the dominant elements of the composition. So in these early stages of the painting, um, it's really important for me to have a pretty clear sense of where I want the painting to go and how I want it to roughly look like when it's done. And I'm thinking about that as I'm putting all these tentative lines in, erasing things um, and changing things and moving them around. And as I'm doing that, um, I always work from the center of interest outward. And the reason for that is that everything else in the design of the painting has to relate back to the center of interest. So I want to have a clear idea of how I'm placing that before I move on to other elements of the painting. Here, um, switching from a small flat brush to a fairly large filbert brush um, to sketch in the pine tree, which is uh, also a dominant element of the composition of this painting. With trees, it's very important to get the gesture right. Each tree has sort of its own personality. In this case, this tree um, bends up from the bottom of the trunk towards the top to the right. And the branches, as they come down on the tree, uh, start to droop a bit. And those are kind of distinctive, and I want to get those right and just suggest those in the underpainting. I don't need to get this perfect because that's the kind of thing that I can come in in the final layer of the painting and uh, really refine some of the details. It's one of the reasons that I use uh, a very large brush for this kind of thing. As a general rule, even though I paint fairly detailed and small things, I always try and use the largest brush that I can in any given situation because that helps me to see things in terms of the larger masses and stay away from the kinds of details that can uh, Kind of bog down the painting. And then here uh, I'm going to begin by sort of sketching in the sky and this is important um, even though it doesn't really inform my color decisions in the final layer of the painting. The underpainting serves as sort of a guide to the value structure of the finished painting and in, in most landscape scenes what you'll find is the sky is actually the lightest value and often it's a very large portion of the, of the painting as it is in this case. So for me to see the other values accurately, I need to have that sky as a baseline. And that's why I do the sky before I move into adding some of the values in this building here. Now, um, one of the main reasons that I, I spend so much time on this, this first layer of the painting, which is just all going to get covered up, um, spending a lot of time really focusing on the values of something complicated like this building. So it's, it's painted in three different colors, and those local colors 
make it very difficult to see some of the values accurately. So for example, you're going to see me adjusting the value of the roof relative to the value of the shadow in the white part of the building. And as I'm looking at the scene and I'm understanding it more clearly, I see more clearly that the shadow area is definitely a little bit darker than the roof. And it's subtle, but these things are important to pick up on and translate in your painting if you're going to create a, an accurate sense of light that sort of pervades the whole scene. So in landscape painting, one of the biggest challenges that we face is creating the sense of the sense of light as it interacts with so many different kinds of objects with different textures and different colors. And the way that I work through these problems is by really focusing on value before turning to color and using my understanding of the value of the scene to influence my color choices later on. And what you'll notice here is I'm still working with a fairly large brush, so I try and keep the number of brushes to a minimum, just working with two larger brushes for the um, darks and lights, and then two uh, smaller flat brushes to work on some of the details. So here I begin to refine some of the architectural elements, which are very important in the scene. The contrast between these very dark windows and this dark door um, really draw our eye in. So it's important to establish this early on. I'm going to continue refining that. At this stage, I'm really beginning to look at some of these details in this building, and I'll turn the panel around quite a bit. The reason for that is it's much easier to draw a straight and accurate horizontal line than it is to draw a vertical line, regardless of what kind of brush you're using. So I will always turn the panel around to get the clearest line and the cleanest edge that I can when it's necessary. And as I'm looking at these architectural details, what I'm really focusing on first and foremost are, are areas of the strongest contrast, where lights come up against dark. So where I see that most clearly in this scene, for example, um, between the roof and the white part of the building, I see that in some places, and especially around the window frames. It's very, it's a very small area, but the light hits these windows um, in the bottom right corner, and that contrasts fairly strongly with uh, the dark part of the window and the shaded part of the window frame. What you'll find with adding details as you develop a painting is that it's not about adding every detail that you see, but understanding which details are essential to include um, in that they help us to better understand how the light acts in this painting. So what you'll see here is, um, again, the window frame and the door frame on the right side are more well lit than on the left side. And that's, that's very important to establish because this light is really raking from the from the top left corner of the painting, let's say. That's the direction of the light. So at this point, I'm fairly happy with uh, the amount of refinement that I've gotten in the building, and I'll begin to move outward in the composition away from the center of interest. And I'm working on another tree here. This is a very different kind of tree, but still my approach is to be very gestural. So using a much smaller brush, of course, but I'm not at this stage of the painting focusing on small details. Um, I want to suggest the character of the tree get the outline accurate, make sure it takes up exactly the amount of space that I want it to in the finished composition. Um, and in my final layers of paint, there's going to be a little bit of refinement, but really not much once the uh, sort of the essential shape of the tree has been established. At this point, I'm going to finish up my first session of this uh, painting. The underpainting stage of, of, a, of a piece will typically take me one or two sessions, um, no more than a couple of hours each. It is the slowest part of the painting for me. Once I've worked through a lot of these drawing issues, understanding the value of the scene, I allow the paint to dry fully, and when I go in with color, it doesn't take me much time at all. This is how I left it after the first session, and then in a minute here I'll show you what it looked like when I uh, left the underpainting in a stage that I considered pretty complete and ready to let it dry, and then in a week or two I can return to it once the paint has uh, dried fully and not just to the touch, and I can uh, um, add some color.